Tonight you have to make fire bombs to burn down the library. We are not quiet. Don't you understand? Change the world order. You will not die now, but soon. You just have to burn down the library. You're doing evil things. If you don't do this, then your parents will get ill. Do nothing right. And you won't be able to go on holiday. You will need to hear all of this. The first voices I heard was the voice of a child. I looked for, for the child in the grass beneath me, and I couldn't find. So I went home, and when I was sitting on the chair, I heard the child again. Strange, but not scary. And after many years, the friendly voices changed into a man voice, terrible man voices. And he, he said that somebody, perhaps the man behind me, will murder me. It's scary. Hearing voices, or uh, the medical term auditory hallucinations, are most characteristic for schizophrenia. But they are also encountered in several other psychiatric disorders, as well as in neurological disorders and in patients with hearing loss. Auditory hallucinations can also be experienced by um, healthy individuals in the general population, and that occurs in some 15%. And whether or not uh, hearing voices is encountered as a problem, has everything to do with the content of these voices, or so what these voices say. Many patients can be helped with antipsychotic medication, but quite a few of them are resistant to antipsychotic medication, and in, in these patients, these voices just go on and on for many years. And the aim of our research is to find new treatments to help those patients as well. And what we want to do is understand exactly what's going on in the brain when people are hallucinating. We ask people to be in the MRI scanner and push a button at the moment that they hear these voices. That way we can track what was going on in the brain during these moments so we can see which brain areas are actively involved in hallucinations. These regions are very important in language processing and language perception. So it does seem like patients are hearing their voices, not just imagining them. And while this is fascinating, it also appears that they have activation in other regions, here on the left and in the right side of the brain, which are very important in language production. So they're also forming language, thinking, so to say. So they probably also form their own hallucinations. Then you might wonder, why do they need not experience all their thoughts as hallucinations? And this might be because normal language is mostly produced in the left hemisphere, while during hallucinations, mostly the right hemisphere is active. A second step was to find out how are these hallucinations triggered? Where do they come from? What we did is, is have a look at brain activation preceding hallucinations because they're probably triggered inside the brain. So then we saw a lot of signal change in this region. In this region, which is called the left parahippocampal gyrus, is very important in memory retrieval. So it does seem that prior to hallucinating, people remember something. So this hallucination might actually be the re-experience of this memory. And that's quite in line with, some with what some patients tell us, because they say that they often keep on re-experiencing the same hallucinations. The last thing we wanted to do is compare brain activation during hallucinations between healthy people who hallucinate and patients and see if they uh, have similar activation. And if you look at these pictures, again, this is the left side of the brain and this is the right side of the brain, you see that it's highly similar. And this does imply that it's really the same phenomenon, the voices in these two groups. And this is really fascinating because these healthy people do not use medication, they do not have any other symptom, so they're a very good model to study these hallucinations in isolation. Now that we know which brain circuits underlie hallucinations, we seek to manipulate these circuits in order to make the voices disappear. And we use several uh, different methods to do so. One of them is TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation. This is a safe, non-invasive technique in which we can decrease brain activity in a small area. Now, a few patients have become completely free of voices using this technique, which is of course great. But in comparison to a placebo treatment, 
there was no significant benefit of the TMS technique, which indicates that it's insufficiently effective. Now we are still looking at other alternatives to use TMS, but we are also looking at a more invasive method in which an electrode is implanted just underneath the skull, which can provide 24-7 stimulation. Now this technique certainly carries some risks as it is an invasive method and is therefore only indicated for patients who suffer from intolerable hallucinations. Some years ago, um, I met a patient who told me about his voices. Now, he really wasn't complaining about them. He just told me because I asked him. And he had been hearing voices for so many years, I believe more than 10 years. And he was hearing these voices all day long. And it was really hearing nasty messages. I was so impressed by, by his suffering and I thought it should be possible to help patients like him. It should be possible to develop new techniques to make these voices go away. And I still believe that it is possible. And in some years, in the worst case, in many years, we will have new techniques that can make all patients free of voices.